Hi, it's Mike Panja, and today we're going to do a date nut bread. Now, normally I don't feel it's my duty or my responsibility to give history lectures, but there is a bit of history here that I think we should examine. In December of 2013, the Thomas's Company, yes, the same ones that make the English muffins, Thomas's English muffins, ceased production and sale of their date nut bread. Now to me, it was almost a complete mystery. It was such a good product and popular and priced right. My suspicion is that the dates which were procured from the Middle East may have become a political issue, may have become a problem uh, and, and represented and unreliable supply. So rather than fight it, fight the system, they just discontinued the product. I don't know why, maybe some of you can investigate that and get back to the rest of us and tell us what contributed to that executive decision to discontinue that product. Anyway, today I'm going to resurrect it. I've played with a few different recipes and I've settled on the one that is most like the original Thomas's date nut loaf. I love it and I hope you're going to enjoy it too. Here are the ingredients you'll need to make your date nut loaf. An eight ounce package of pitted dried dates, three quarters of a cup of hot black coffee, two tablespoons of brandy, half cup of brown sugar, half stick of butter at room temperature, one and three quarters cups of all purpose flour, three quarters of a teaspoon of salt, one teaspoon of baking soda, one egg beaten, one teaspoon of vanilla, one cup of coarsely chopped walnuts. Why don't you print a screenshot of this so you have the ingredients all written down. Let's put it together. I have my eight ounces of pitted dried dates, three quarters of a cup of hot black coffee, two tablespoons of brandy, half a cup of brown sugar. Now, if your brown sugar packs up in the package like mine and forms a brick, what I've done here is I've chunked it up into smaller pieces so it'll dissolve more easily in our solution here. And a half a stick of butter at room temperature. Stir that all up. Now for the dry ingredients. It calls for one and three quarters cups of all-purpose flour. If you don't mind, I'm going to use the grams equivalent. It's a little easier and cleaner for me, 220 grams. So I've set my scale to zero. Two twenty. Now we need three quarters of a teaspoon of salt. What do you think? That look about right? Sure. Three quarters of a teaspoon of salt and a teaspoon of baking soda. Okay, 
we'll mix that all up and dump it in with our liquid. Incidentally, if you have a problem with the coffee or the brandy being added, you can omit the brandy and use water instead of the coffee and that's fine. You don't really get a coffee taste. Uh, it's more for the color than anything else. But if you omit it, it still comes out fine. I've done it both ways. Around this time, you should start to preheat your oven, set it to 350, and let it get warmed up a bit. Okay, this looks well blended. Now, I need one egg beaten to add to the mix. Fold that in. The last thing we need is about a cup of coarsely chopped walnuts. We'll fold those in and our batter is complete. Now I'm making an executive decision here. I normally use a five by nine loaf pan, but I also have a smaller loaf pan, four and a half by eight and a half, which I prefer for this dish because I like the loaf to rise higher. I think it just looks better. It cooks just as well in the larger loaf pan, so don't go out and buy a special loaf pan. Uh, either one works fine. I've used cooking spray on it so that the thing will come out a little easier in the end. Got all the batter in there. Smooth it out a little bit. You know, I don't know if you caught me, but I forgot to add in the teaspoon of vanilla. So I just sprinkled it on top and stirred it into the batter. And I think that'll be okay. Into the oven she goes. 350 for 50 minutes. Fifty minutes and it's done. We'll set it on the cooling rack for fifteen or twenty minutes and let it cool down before we slice it. Well, let's take a look. Looks pretty nice. Ready to serve this with some cream cheese. Beautiful. And that's how it's done. Well, there you have our copycat version of the famous 
Thomas's Date Nut Loaf. I hope you'll make it and enjoy it. Are there others that you can share it with? Maybe you think it's a little pushy to try and ask them to subscribe to my video channel. So how about just sharing it with them? Share it with someone that you think it would be appropriate for. Meanwhile, give me a thumbs up. I can't hear your applause for how you like these videos, but I can see your thumbs up and your comments back. Speaking of comments back, I've been gaining weight while I've been producing these videos, eating all this food that I've been making with you. So I'm asking you to put in the comments any suggestions you have for something healthy and delicious that I can make on a video. Meanwhile, thanks for watching. I'm glad you're out there and I'll see you again next time.